What's happening? This is Ronnie Magnier. And how you doing Facebook and the rest of the world? It's not one of the four tops. I've been asked to tell a story about how I came up with this um, Elvis Presley song. It's called Nobody Did It Like the King. And it's a tribute to Elvis. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be one of the first songs that have been written about Elvis and not trying to imitate Elvis, you know. Um, well, one of the first songs is has been known. I don't know, I haven't heard of any others. But anyway, um, in about 1988, 87, I met a, a guy named Mr. Ed Wingate, okay? And he used to be the owner of a record company called Golden World. Um, and this was a company that really started getting a lot of um, attention on the record business scene because he had acts like um, Edwin Starr, if you remember that. Edwin Starr came from a group called The Holidays that he had. <clears throat> and he had a song out called Agent Double O Soul. And um, sending out an SOS. But he started a group called The Holidays, Edwin Starr. Then, and also, Mr. Wendy had a group called The Flaming Embers, who did a song called Just Like Romeo and Juliet. Uh, who else? They had Pat Lewis, meant something that can't shake loose. Uh, I believe they had J.J. J. Barnes then, or Thea Barnes' brother, J.J. Barnes, or the San Remo Golden Strings. Anyway, this company at Golden World was getting so much play and attention till Motown came to Mr. Wingate and asked him would he get out of the business because he was competing with them a lot. He was using the Funk Brothers <laughs> to record a lot of the songs and stuff. So Mr. Wingate said, well, you know, uh, and he told me this story personally. He said, well, Barry Gordy gave him an offer he couldn't refuse. So he sold uh, Golden World to Motown, and he got out of the business. Okay, but as years went by, Mr. Wingate kind of got record business fever, and he would start doing uh, other projects with people. Never, nothing never became of him, but he still would you know, do it every now and then. That's where I came in in 1987, and I met him. Man had great vision. He would make uh, myself and uh, some other writers that we had, uh, one of my partners that wrote with me, uh, Michael Crump, we would go down to his house, seven in the morning, he'd make us come down there like if it, it was a job. Seven in the morning and we would start writing songs. I mean, it's like a real job. I mean, he had us on salary. So um, this particular day he came up and told us, hey son, I want you to, we're gonna write about the king. I said, what king, man? The king of rock and roll. He said, Elvis Presley. I said, man, now I wouldn't have thought of writing, or to be honest, I wouldn't have thought of writing a song about the king of rock and roll or anybody else, really, unless it's a love song or, you know, regular songs that we write. So he said, no, nah, man, we're going to write this song. And so we sat there, and he told me, he said, you go, he used to call me the band because I played the music. I put the tracks together and did the melodies to everything. So he uh, said, go ahead and get this melody together, and I want to get this, together, this song together. So we sat there, and we got the words together and started writing, and we came up with a great song. And as years have gone by, I've watched where they celebrate Elvis every year. We wrote the song in 1988, and um, through the years, we've well, really been sleeping on it because it's a great song, and we never really got it out to let people hear about it. And this is, uh, I think, a great opportunity for me to present this song to the world. And I think they're gonna like it. And um, it was because of this man's great vision that we wrote this song. And really, I remember as a kid, um, I, also, I used to always sing, Hound Dog, Blue Sway Shoes. And a lot of the guys would sing that, you know, so. <clears throat> Some, even some people that heard the song said, how did you come up with that? You're an R&B and a jazz guy. How did you come up with a song that's a rock and roll song like that? I said, man, I'm a musician. I come up with anything, you know. But I remember back when I was a kid, I used to sing. It ain't, it ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. And then, don't you step on my blue switches. We always would sing that kind of stuff. And really, and truthfully, I like Elvis movies. <laughs> Especially when he played cowboys and in the army. Around when I got about 11, 10 or 11 years old, my dad bought my mom a new piano. 
and six weeks free lessons came with it. So I was the oldest kid, so they put me in the lesson. I didn't want to do it, but boy, thank God that they did. I really appreciate that they made me do it to this day, okay? They gave me a skill when I didn't even know I was going to have one. And, uh, and, and I've done pretty good for myself, playing the piano, singing and writing songs. But that's how I started listening to Elvis Presley that far back. But when Motown came, and it was around 1961 or 62, I was about 11 years old then, and they stole my heart. So my whole life after that was kind of like Motown and the R&B and the love songs and the, the songs that they would do. I learned that stuff, man. So I got away from really um, all the other stuff that I had learned in before. Like a lot of the blues and, and rock and roll songs. Matter of fact, back in the late 50s, I remember a song, and it might have been in 1960 when I was just learning to play the piano. There was a guy named Johnny Rivers. Had a song I called Memphis. And it went like this. It was an instrumental song, but it was. say when Motown came took my heart so once again here's that song and it's performed by me and these guys I call them the Roger Mac and Company and this is Nobody Did It Like the King of Rock and Roll 